On the 28th of November, 2014, Sarah Sands was a 32-year-old single mother of three from London. She had been on a waiting list for a council property for a number of years. From what I can tell, the four had a somewhat turbulent past. But 20... Chat, I'm not gonna lie, both these niggas look like murderers, bro. This, no, 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 chill. Ah! They both look like murderers, bro. 2014 was the year that her family would be given a flat in Silvertown, East London. Sarah, along with her eldest Bradley, age 12, and her two twins, Alfie and Reese, both 11, now had a chance at a fresh start. Things were going well in the beginning. Sarah said that her children were settling in well at school and seemed to be enjoying their new life. Things were looking good and everybody was happy. Opposite the block of flats where the family lived is another block of flats. Inside there lived a 77-year-old man named Michael Please Dead, or at least... Bro, wait, his name is Michael Please Dead? What the... Chat, what the fuck? Bruh. Nigga name is Michael Please Dead. Nah, see, it's, if you know that, that's literally like, like signifying niggas gonna die. Nigga name is Please Dead. That's what he told people his name was. Oh, wait, hold on. Michael yeah? presented himself as a sweet, lonely, and vulnerable old man who would sell the newspapers at the local newsagent shop. Everyone in the area seemed to get along with Michael very well. Locals who knew him would often stop and speak with him. Shortly after moving in, Sarah met Michael, and the two developed quite the bond. Don't tell me she was out here fucking this nigga, Chad. Come on now. At the time, Sarah would now. have described Michael as just a nice and friendly old man. The two would often chat with Bro, each other, she like she and she would, on occasion, even cook him meals and bring them over to his flat. If Michael needed anything, Sarah was always happy to help, and she would often keep him company. As Sarah's son Bradley was at this point 12 years old, he was looking for some weekend work that was suitable for his age, just so he would be able to earn a few quid. And by chance- A few quid, yeah? Yo, nah, blood trying to order and get a new few quid, yeah? You know, you know, try a little few extra pounds and a few extra quid, yeah? You know? Michael asked you know, Sarah it, if her son Bradley quid, yeah. would be interested in helping him at the newsagents. Sarah trusted Michael and considered him to be a good friend. She had no issues with Michael asking this, and many other young boys in the community had also helped Michael for some extra pocket money. She asked her son if he would be interested. Bradley was incredibly excited and jumped at the chance to earn himself some extra money. Soon enough, Bradley was at the shops helping to sort the papers, and on a couple of occasions, he also brought along with him his twin brothers. Although, not long after starting, Bradley told Sarah that he no longer wished to do any more work for Michael, and the despicable reason why would soon come out. In November of 2014... I will come in your throat, chat, listen bro. Don't make me fucking end the stream of your bitch asses, nigga. Sarah's weird. twins broke down and told her every parent's worst nightmare. They told her that after helping Michael sort some of the papers, he invited them back to his flat. Don't because tell Michael me. had don't built up trust with the boys, they me, agreed, Jack. and ah, they went back to his home with him. Once there, Michael essayed the two boys. Chat, listen, I don't want to be rude, Chat. I don't, I don't want to be rude. Chat, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. Bruh. How do you let like a seven year old, seventy one year old fucking grandpa, fragile ass, like a, like a vase, s a u? How does that happen, bro? I don't want to be rude, you know, like it, it happens, but how does like how do you let that happen, bro? Can't like you're young as hell, can't you just molly wop in the straight face real quick, bro? Oh my Bradley chatting. then found out that his two brothers had been groomed by Michael. Sarah found Bradley in his room, crying uncontrollably, shaking, and pulling his hair out. He told his mother that he too had been abused by Michael, but was too scared and ashamed to admit anything. Bradley kept saying, I should have told you before. Michael had befriended Sarah to gain her trust and to get closer to her children. That's From fun, day bro. one, That's this had weird. been his plan. Sarah sat with her bro, boys you all can't night trust anybody, as they Chad. explained like, that- Not like, bro, like, bro, you, imagine like a seven-year-old nigga, like, doing that weird stuff, bro. 
Like, and you think he's like such a nice old man. Like, nobody was actually going to think like old people like that is actually weirdos. And, like, this is why. They had been groomed and abused by Michael. Sarah would later say that the level of guilt she felt consumed her. She said yeah, that it was her bro. main job to that's protect depressing. her children, and she felt that she had massively failed them. Sarah immediately contacted the police. She and her boys explained everything to the investigators, and Michael was swiftly arrested. This pretty much should have been the end of the story, but unfortunately, it isn't. Shortly after being apprehended by the police, Michael pleaded not guilty and was released on bail. Yo, what? But not only released, he was allowed to move back into his apartment Yo, what? right across the road from where Sarah and her three boys lived. Yo, her children. Chat, what the? Yo, what the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck? Children were terrified. They were scared that Michael may seek that is, revenge. That's bad. Man, and that's if they terrible. left that's the terrible. flat, bumping into him was a real possibility. Sarah, of course, like was absolutely bro. furious and went right to the police station. She pleaded and begged for the authorities to re-arrest Michael. However, they refused and instead advised her to move. No longer feeling safe in their home, Sarah took herself and her three boys to her mother's house and the four lived there for a number of days. Sarah then contacted the local council and asked them to move Michael. They too said there was nothing they could do. They said they could rehome Sarah and the boys, but it would be away from London. And worse yet, because Michael had pleaded not guilty, the three boys would have to attend the trial and give evidence against him. Uh How do you- wait, so- that's what I was gonna wonder, right? So when people make like 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 um like like rape allegations or like essay allegations like like months after the fact that happened, how do people get evidence that that actually happened? That's what I always wanna wonder. Like with Andrew Tate, for example, people claim that he like did a shit, but like, there's like no evidence. You feel me? So how do people get evidence months after? You know? A horrifying prospect for Unless, any victim of such a crime. Like, you know, but like, especially like, for children. Report, like, the shit Sarah right felt that, happened, that like, nobody was files. listening to her and felt a great injustice that Michael was freely allowed to roam the streets. A few days later, on the 28th of November, Sarah drank two bottles of wine and made her way from her mother's house back to her flat alone. No, she went to back in her flat, chat. she looked at photographs of her three boys and began to weep. The shame she felt due to her boys being abused under her care became too much. Sarah got up, walked into her kitchen, and grabbed a 12-inch knife. She then left her block of flats and walked over to the opposite block where Michael lived. I, she justified, stood outside, justified, knocked, justified. and waited for him to answer. Michael came to the door and the two began speaking. Sarah demanded that he do the right thing and confess to the crimes he had committed so her children would not have to relive their trauma in court. Michael pushed back and stated that her children were lying and that he had done no such thing. Not convinced, Sarah like, said, Chad, to be honest, bro, I believe the guys, because guys don't lie about that, bro. Like, even though there's, like, a lot of guys that, like, got touched or, like, got R, like, R word or essayed when they were younger, and they never come out, because it's, like, for a guy, it's embarrassing, even for a female too, but, like, for a guy, even though, like, that's way more embarrassing, bro. I don't think guys make, I never heard, like, a fake rape or S or SA allegation of a guy, and it was false. I never heard of it, so like I think it's actually true for them. Blankly at him, Probably and this is yeah. when Michael's personality shifted. Realizing that Sarah didn't believe him, he became cocky, abrupt, and began to smirk. He showed no remorse for the pain he had caused her children. Sarah later stated that she didn't recognize the man who she had previously seen as her friend. He refused to listen and refused to admit what he had done. Sarah then pulled out the 12-inch knife. Michael panicked and rushed towards her. Sarah then plunged the knife into Michael again yes, and again. She sad, stabbed yo. Michael a total of eight times yes, and then quickly justified. left the scene. In the CCTV footage, Sarah can be seen fleeing from the scene with the knife in her hand. Michael lay in his flat alone and slowly bled to death. An hour after attacking Michael, Sarah turned herself in to the police. She explained the situation to them and stated that she had lost all control. She claimed that she didn't intend to actually kill Michael. She only wanted to make him confess to the crimes. Sarah was arrested and charged with murder, and her children were put into the care of their grandparents. 
Following the killing, it was found that Michael wasn't even his real name. His real name was Robin Malt. Although, oh, to keep things simple, I shall keep referring to him as Michael. Under his old name, Michael had multiple convictions for SAing young boys. Oh, oh, now, oh, look at you now, huh? So it was actually true, dumbass. Was, the, the legal system be dumb sometimes. Niggas won't be actually going like, I, I think people just say like, oh, nah, whatever. Just don't do extra work, bro. Now look at these dumbasses. Now y'all could have stopped somebody from dying. From 1970. That's what I'm saying. How didn't the cops ID him? That goes to show that these cops were lazy as fuck, bro. They didn't want to do no work. Lazy ass cops, bro. Like I said, that's my exact question too. How did no cop ID him? Like, how did, how did they ID him? Look at it. Now, now the nigga dead. In 1991, a shocking total of 24 previous convictions. He 24? served sentences nah, of crazy. between 9 Blood and 6 years called. for his crimes. And here is where the case becomes even more disgusting than it already is. A legal loophole in the United Kingdom allows registered offenders to change their name and get a new driving license and passport, which means they can pass a criminal record check. This gave Michael the chance to evade the authorities, allowing him to get closer to children once more. Nobody knew of Michael's past because he had changed his name and because his crimes predated the sex offenders register. The flat that Michael had been living in was given to him by the council. The flat was overlooking a primary school. It then emerged oh, in the media what? that hundreds of offenders had changed their names and never told the authorities meaning that many were working with children and had passed a criminal check. The trial began in September of 2015. The evidence was presented to the court and Sarah explained her situation and how she lost control and acted as a mother who only wanted to protect her children. The judge overlooking the case stated that Sarah's case was truly exceptional and took yes. into account the horrific acts Michael had committed and yes. the fact that he was allowed back into his flat. Sarah was convicted of manslaughter by reason of loss of control and not murder. Yes! She was sentenced to three and a half years. W, w, However, w, w. some people were under the opinion that this sentence was far too lenient and what? an appeal to extend yo, her see, sentence was yo, lodged. That's the, the reason for extending... That's like the Twitter niggas, bro. I, like, that's what I mean by the Twitter niggas, bro. Niggas be trying to justify like like, like R words and essayers, bro. If you really try to like get mad at her because the, the shit was too lenient, bro, then, then have, I don't want to be rude. But have your kids get get essayed. Three of your sons, matter of fact. Some guy literally manipulated you, lying to you about your fake name, lying about their whole shit, and then you trust him with your sons, uh, for because you're an old man, you need help. But then like he does that dumb shit, and then you like have that happen to you, and see see how you will feel, bro. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Ending Sarah's sentence were as follows. She walked. Justifying murder hide. is crazy too. But for a valid reason, I think it's good. For a valid reason, come on now, bro. The U.S. literally murders and murders innocent kids in fucking Vietnam, fucking Iran. They murder innocent kids, but no one says shit about that. Her identity in the CCTV and try to not leave any fingerprints, which showed signs of premeditation. And after stabbing Michael, she fled from the scene and did not call for any medical aid. For these reasons, Sarah's sentence was doubled to seven years. As of today, Sarah is now free. W. She served four years of her seven-year sentence and was released in August of 2018. W, Sarah. Many in the local area praised Sarah for what she did, and many people sent her letters in prison telling her that she was a hero for what she did and that they would have done the same if they were in her position. Others believe that her sentence was valid and that she should have let the courts do their job. After Sarah was freed from prison, her children waived their right to anonymity so they could speak out and defend their mother. They said that Michael's death brought them some relief, knowing that he could no longer harm anyone ever again. Since being released, Sarah has given a number of interviews to ensure people know her full side. W press run on God. Of the story. W clout In one chase. interview she said, I never dreamt I'd be capable. I have no pride in killing him, but at least I know he can't hurt anyone else. I'm not a bad person, but I know I did do a bad thing. I've never denied that I should have been punished. I'd never kill again, and I don't see myself as a murderer. But I don't regret what I did. I was a mother, desperate to protect my children. Olé. Nah, that's actually a W, mom. I ain't gonna lie. I think it's justified. If you don't think that's justified, you're just a weirdo. To me, Chad, I think, I think that's justified. I ain't gonna lie.